Hey you guys, it's Haley here again. So welcome back to our Tuesday story time. So I want to thank everybody for coming out today. We are going to do this today with the Riverkeeper like we do every week. So um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we do, what the Catawba Riverkeeper actually does, and then I'm going to give you guys the opportunity to introduce yourselves and we're going to dive right in. So the book this week is called The Lorax. Some of you might have heard of this book. Some of you might have seen the movie or the TV show, but we're going to get the chance to read the actual book today. So um, my name is Haley. I work for the Catawba River Keeper, and what we do is we try and make sure that the Catawba River is three things. One is drinkable, fishable, and swimmable. And that's always what our aim is. And so we do water testing, we do education, we do community outreach, we do lots of different engagement and education as well as advocacy and protection. So we try and let everybody know on the secret that we know about and we want everyone else to know as well that all water eventually ends up um, here in the Catawba River Basin, it ends up in the river. And so what we want to educate people on, including you and all, all my friends watching, is that all of the water that falls on any pavement or anyone's yard or pastures or parking lots eventually ends up in the river. And so we want to make sure that everything that live in the river um, as well as us who drink the water that comes from the Catawba River, that it's clean, that all of that water is clean. So, that being said, now I'm going to give you guys the opportunity to introduce yourselves. So, on the count of three, I want you to tell me your names. All right, ready? One, two, three. Well, welcome! It's so wonderful to finally meet you all. So today, like I said earlier, we're going to be reading The Lorax by Dr. Seuss. So I'm sure that you've read something by Dr. Seuss or heard of something by Dr. Seuss. The biggest one that you'll probably recognize is The Grinch. So Dr. Seuss wrote the story The Grinch. He is a wonderful writer. And this book is really interesting because it talks about lots of ways that we can help um, and that we can see uh, the environment and all the things that depend on a healthy environment. So before we get started, we're going to do like we do every single week. We are going to just look at the title, make some mm, educated guesses about it, and then we're going to walk through the book without reading the words yet and just see what what is this going to be about. So The Lorax by Dr. Seuss. Um, the first thing that comes to mind for me is what rhymes with Lorax. I cannot think of a single thing. So I do not know what a Lorax is, um, but I think we're going to find out. I don't know. He might be this little guy. It might be these trees. We don't know. All right. Ooh, this looks like it might be a little bit of a uh, creepy or maybe a scary book. Okay, so it's kind of dark. Or oh, there's a boy. Okay. There's a person, looks like a boy, maybe, walking around. Okay. Doesn't look like anyone lives in that house, does it? Oh, okay. So, oh, okay. Maybe something does live in the house. We don't know what's going on. Things look dark. <gasps> Things are not dark anymore. Wow. Huh. Okay. Oh, looks like a donkey, maybe. Some trees, some very colorful trees. Maybe they look like dandelions, you know, when you pick them up and blow them out. Hmm. Okay. Oh, there's that, there's that little thing on the, the front of the book. Maybe that's a Lorax. We'll never know. Ooh, looks like some kind of suit. I don't know. Very, okay. He, whatever this green thing is, likes machines. There's all these parts for machines. Oh, they're making something. Oh, okay. Well, they don't look very happy, do they? Wow. They don't look very happy. It's getting dark again. Ooh, man. Okay, so it looks like going through this book, we're going to learn about other creatures and things. Maybe whatever these green guys are making something. Okay, let's figure it out. Let's figure this out together. All right, The Lorax by Dr. Seuss. Okay. All right. At the 
far end of town where the grickle grass grows and the wind smells slow. The wind smells slow and sour when it blows, and no birds ever sing excepting old crows in the street of the lifted Lorax. Okay, so something to know about Dr. Seuss is he likes to make up words and he likes silly things. So some of these words you might have heard before. If you've never heard this word before, it's okay. Dr. Seuss is very imaginative. All right. In deep in the grickle grass, some people say if you look deep enough, you can still see today. Where the Lorax once stood just as long as it could before somebody lifted the Lorax away. Okay, so the Lorax left from somewhere. I still don't know, exactly know what a Lorax is, but he left. He was lifted away. What was the Lorax? Why was it there? Okay, good. We're not the only ones wondering. And why was it lifted and taken somewhere from the far end of town where the grickle grass grows? And the old Wunzler still lives here. Ask him. He knows. Hmm. So this maybe not might actually be an abandoned house. Someone actually might live there. All right. Now won't see the Wunzler. Don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurkum on top of his door. He lurks in his lurkum, cold under the roof, where he makes his own clothes out of miffed mufflered moof and on special dank midnights in august he peeks out of the shutters and sometimes he speaks and tells how the lorax was lifted away okay he'll tell you perhaps if you're willing to pay what gotta pay to learn what the lorax is on the end of the rope he looks down his tail his tail pale and you have to toss him 15 cents and a nail and a shell of a great, great, great grandfather snail. Okay, there's a pail. And then he pulls up the pail, makes a most careful count to see if you've paid him the proper amount. And then he hides what you paid him away in his sooth, his secret strange hole in his groveless glove. Okay. Slurp, down slurps the whisper phone to your ear. And the Wensler's whispers are not very clear. Since they have come down through a snurgler hose, he sounds of is as if he had a smallish bee up his nose. Now I'll tell you, he says, with his teeth sounding gray, how the Lorax got lifted and taken away. It all started way back, such a long, long time ago. So there's, there's whatever that listening, the whisper in my phone is. Oh, way back in the days when the grass was still green and the pond was still wet and the clouds were clean and the songs of the swami swans rang out in space. One morning, I came to this glorious place. I first saw the trees, the truffula trees. Okay. The brightly colored tufts of truffula trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. So, it seems like all of these little guys are trees, and they're called truffula trees. Okay. And under the trees, I saw brown barbalots frisking in their barbalot suits, and they played in the shade and ate truffula fruits. From the ripulous pond came a comfortable sound of the humming fish humming while splashing around. But those trees, those trees, those truffula trees, all my life I've been searching for trees such as these, the touch of their tuft was much softer than silk, and they had a sweet smell of fresh butterfly milk. I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart, and I knew just what I'd do. I unloaded my cart. 
there he is, and there's his card. Hmm. In no time at all, I had built a small shop. And then I chopped down a truffula tree with one chop. And with great skillful skill and with great speedy speed, I took the soft tuft and I knitted a thneed. <laughs> the instant I'd finished, I heard a gazump and I looked. I saw something pop out of the stump of the tree that I'd chopped down. It was sort of a man. Describe him? That's hard. I don't know if I can. He was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy. He spoke with a voice that was sharply, sharpish and bossy. Okay, so there is something that came out of the stump. It's the same something that was on the cover of this book. Mr. He said with a sawdusty sneeze, I am the Lorax, and I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. And I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset as he shouted and puffed. What's that thing you made out of my truffula tuft? All right, so there's the Lorax, and he doesn't sound very happy. Look, Lorax, I said, there's no cause for alarm. I chopped just one tree, and I'm doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. This thing is called a thneed. A thneed is a fine something that all people need. It's a shirt, it's a sock, it's a glove, it's a hat. But it has other uses. Yes, far beyond that. You can use it as carpet for pillows and for sheets or curtains or covers or even bicycle seats said the Lorax, sir, you are crazy with greed. There is no one on earth who will buy that fool Thneed. So this is a Thneed and that's a Lorax and it looks a little bit crazy, I'm gonna be honest. All right, but the very minute I proved that he was wrong, for just at that minute, a chap came along and he thought that the Thneed I admit knitted was great. He happily bought it for thirty, for three ninety eight. I laughed at the Lorax. You poor stupid guy. You never can tell what some people will buy. Okay, there's a person walking away with this need that he needed. Apparently, I repeat. The Lorax cried. I speak for the trees. I'm busy. I told him. Shout. Shut up, if you please. Ooh, he's not very nice, is he? The Lorax didn't say that. This guy said that. I rushed across the room, and in no time at all, I built a radio phone, and I put in a quick call. Okay, so he is very handy, as we saw with all those mechanical devices and instruments down here, that he's handy. He built that phone, okay? He made a radio phone. I called my brothers and my uncles and my aunts, and I said, listen here. Here's a wonderful chance for the whole Wenzler family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast and take the road to North Niche. Turn left at Weeconnen, sharp right at South Stitch. And in no time at all, the factory I built, the whole Wenzler family was working full tilt. We were knitting the needs, but as just as busy as bees to the sound of chopping of truffula trees. Ooh. Okay, so there's all the truffula trees. Yep, they're, look, they're chopping them all down. Yeah. Oh my gosh, they're chopping them all down. Then, oh baby, oh, how my business did grow, and now chopping one tree at a time was too slow. So I quickly invented a super axe hacker, which whacked off four truffula trees in one smacker. We were making needs four times as fast as before, and the Lorax, he didn't show up anymore. Oh, wow. Look at those trees. He's an inventor. He invented lots of things. But the next week, he knocked on my front office door. I snapped. I'm the, he snapped. I'm the Lorax who speaks for the trees, which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. I'm also in charge of the brown bar barbalutes who play in the shade in their barbalute suits. 
and happily lived eating trepula fruits. Now, thanks to your hacking my trees to the ground, there's not enough trepula fruit to go around. And my poor barbaloots are all getting the crummies because they have gas and no food in their tummies. Hmm. They loved living here, but I can't let them stay. They'll have to find food, and I hope that they may. Good luck, boys, I cried, and he sent them away. So there's all the barbaloots. Leave them. I, the onceler, felt sad as I watched them go. Okay, so he's the onceler, the person talking in the book, who's a who's great inventor, and he's cutting on the trees, and he built this factory and knitting the knees. So it's the onceler, okay. But business is business, and business must grow regardless of crummies and tummies, you know. Hmm. Okay, he's not very nice. I meant, I meant no harm. I most truly did not. But I had to grow bigger, so bigger I got. I biggered my factory. I biggered my roads. I biggered my wagons. I biggered the loads of sneeds I shipped out. And I was shipping them far to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went right on biggering, selling more sneeds. And I biggered my money, which everyone needs. Hmm, okay, so he wants lots of money. Then again, he came back. I was fixing some pipes when the old nuisance Lorax came back with more gripes. I am the Lorax. He coughed and he whiffed. He sneezed and he snuffed and he snargled and he sniffed. Once where he cried, with a crufferless croak. Onceler, you're making some smogless smoke. My poor swami swans, why, they can't sing a note. No one can sing who has smog in his throat. Okay, so I think these things are the swami swans. Oh, yep, they are flying. Okay, and so the Lorax, please pardon my cough. We cannot live here. I'm sending them off. Where will you go? I don't hopefully know. They may have to fly for a month or a year to escape from the smog that you've smoggered up around here. Okay, there they are. Flying away. What's more, snapped the Lorax. His dander was up. Let me say a few words about the glippity glup. Your machinery chugs on day and night without stop, making glibbity glup. Also, scruppily scrulp. And what do you do with the leftover goo? I'll show you. You dirty old onceler man, you! Ooh, the Lorax is being a little bit mean, too. Hmm. He's passionate, I guess. You're glumping the pond, or the humming fish hummed. No one can hum, for all their gills are all gummed. So I'm sending them off. Oh, their future is dreary. They'll walk on their fins and get woefully weary in search of some water that isn't so smeary. Ooh, wow, look, the fish are getting out of the water and walking. Never seen that before. And then I got mad, I got terribly mad, and I yelled at the Lorax, now listen here, Dad. All you do is yap, yap, and say, bad, 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 bad. Well, I have my rights, sir, and I'm telling you, I intend to go on doing what I do. And for your information, you Lorax, I'm figuring and biggering and biggering and biggering. Turn more trophula trees into thneeds, which everyone, everyone, Everyone needs. And at that very moment, I heard a loud whack. From outside in the fields came a sickening smack of an axe on a tree, and then he heard the tree fall, the very last truffula tree of them all. Okay, there it is. There's the last truffula tree. Mm. No more trees, no more needs, no more work to be done. So in no time, my uncles and my aunts, everyone, all waved me goodbye and jumped into my cars and drove away under the smoke-smuggered stars. And now all that's left neath the bad-smelling sky is my empty factory, the Lorax, 
and I. So there's the Lorax. And there's everybody leaving. Mm. The Lorax said nothing. He just gave me a glance. Just gave me a very sad, sad, backward glance. He lifted himself by the seat of his pants. I'll never forget the grim look on his face. When he hit when he hoisted himself and took leave of this place. Through a hole in the smog without leaving a trace. Lorax was gone. And all the Lorax left here in this mess was a small pile of rocks. With one word, unless. Whatever that meant, well, I couldn't even guess. There is long, long ago, but each day since that day, I've sat here and worried and worried away. Through the years, while my buildings have fallen apart, I've worried about it with all of my heart. But now, said the Winsler, now that you're here, the word of the Lorax seems perfectly clear. Unless someone like you who cares an awful lot, nothing is going to be better. It's not. Okay. So, catch, calls the Winsler. He let something fall. It's a truffula seed. It's the last of them all. You're in charge of the last of the truffula seeds, and truffula seeds are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffula. Treat it with care. Give it clean water and feed it fresh air. Grow a forest. Protect from axes that hack. Then the Lorax and all his friends may come back. So there's the last truffula seed right there. All right, the end. Okay, you guys, thank you so much for watching. This was the Lorax with Dr. Seuss. And again, I'm Haley. And the last thing that I want you guys to do before I let you go is I want you guys to talk to tell somebody about this book. Tell one person today about this book that you read. Um, and I want you to tell them what a Lorax is and what he tried to protect, which was the truffula trees, right? Okay, thank y'all so much, and I will see you next week, same time, same place, but with a new book. Bye. Have a great week.